I've been debating about whether or not to make this video or just handle this kind of myself. It's one of those things in life that I don't really know. I like to deal with things kind of myself sometimes. I came across a video though of someone yesterday, I think El Rain, I'll, I'll link to it down below the video. She was talking about an experience she had with the discovery of a brain tumor. It is inspiring me, I guess, to make this video. The thing that happened for me in the video when she was talking about it, the journey that she's gone through and the challenges she's been through and her talking about her story, even though mine's nowhere near as significant, made me think I should share because probably there's someone who can benefit from my experience as much as I've benefited from just watching her video. So this video isn't so much about the secret reveal of this video. Uh, I have a pituitary tumor and it was discovered this year, April. I'm gonna talk about the discovery process and everything probably in a different video. Um, but I've come here today to this beautiful location. I'm in the mountains. I wanna talk about somebody in my life who really hurt me. And I'm not gonna go into all the details of it because there's multiple people involved and I can't tell their story. I can only tell my story. So I'm gonna tell my story. I've been carrying the hurt and the anger for more than a decade, which is just mind blowing to me. As far as the pituitary tumor, only a couple of people in my family know. So surprise, that's the big reveal of this video. I don't even know if they watch my YouTube videos or not. So they may know, somebody may share it with them. I'm gonna probably post this after I tell them. But yeah, I've known for months, I have a non-cancerous pituitary tumor. And there's medicine I can take for it and the medicine seems to be helping I've made some notes, so if you see me looking off camera here, that's why I'm just kind of looking through my notes and make sure I cover everything. Part of the growth, I think, of the tumor that I have, squishing my pituitary gland, is the energy block. I believe that your physiology comes from your psychology. That's not always true. I, I don't know enough about cancer. I don't know enough about tumors to say any person got it from something they did. I can only talk about my own personal questioning of myself, my own experience with trying to understand my own physiology. I've created energy blocks, I think, in my body to protect myself and also thoughts I've had about things that happened. And I think the thought process has become like a habit. I heard somebody say a habit is a condition where the body becomes the mind. So your mind should control your body, right? That's the, the theory. But the, mind, the body also has its own mind. Of things it does. I think the body gets informed by the thoughts from your mind and then the body does its own things and then the body gives that as feedback to the mind and then the mind feeds that back through and it can become either a great loop or a not great loop. And in this case about this particular thing, I think I have a not great loop. So this year I've been spending some time in meditation. I think the stuck energy generated a lot of thoughts between 2014 and 2016 about this person. I think these thoughts became self-reinforcing. The thoughts are awful. They're, they're terrible, awful thoughts of what I would like done to this person. I'd never experienced, I mean, sure you get mad at somebody for something. I had never experienced the kinds of things that would just come into my mind about this person, about the kinds of things I could do to destroy this person's life. And they wouldn't even have known it was me. I don't think I ever had thoughts like that before. And it was almost like every day in 2014, 2015, I had these voices and I kept trying to fight them. I really don't know where the thoughts came from. I'm inherently a nice person. I like to treat people well. I believe in the value of life, all life, human life, plant life, animal life. I believe in the value of life, pursuit of happiness, liberty, individuals to be able to determine their own future and freedom. I believe in that. And yet with this person, I kept having these thoughts that these aren't me. This doesn't feel like me. These, these things, they're coming from somewhere else. Some people call this demons, and I'm going to talk about that. But I've been spending a lot of time this year in meditation, or attempting to, and getting back into listening to music and putting myself into different kinds of states. In a meditation I had, I remembered visiting Dachau uh, near Munich in 2008. And I remembered visiting a school in Cambodia that had been converted into a prison during the reign of Pol Pot. You can look it up, but there's movies and books about the killing fields. But this school was turned into a torture place, a place of humans torturing other humans. I remembered being at Auschwitz in this meditation I was having. At, at all of these places and other places that we went during our travels and that we continue to go to, but that these places where, where horrific things happened. 
the, the question I asked is, how could humans do this to other humans? And I kept asking it. I kept asking it. kept reinforcing. 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, even before that in my life, but, but being there physically, I could think about what it must have been like to have been there. The feelings that I had, I needed, I wanted help answering, how could humans do this to other humans? I'd forgotten that that was such a major question for me. Fast forward to 2014 through 2016, I'm having these thoughts about this person who at that point has exited the stage and gotten out of my life, which was necessary. And I'm fighting these thoughts all the time and trying to fight them at some point in there. I don't know when I came across it, but I came across the story of two wolves. Two wolves is a Native American tradition. The idea behind it, but I will also link to the video that I found at that time, the idea behind it is whatever you resist persists. Whatever you fight continues to grow. Right? I saw a psychologist recently talking about a Chinese finger trap. And this is the thing where you put your fingers in the, the little tube and as you pull your fingers apart, the more you pull, the more you try and separate, the, the more you try and get away from it, the more you try and fight those emotions, the stronger the thing gets. Where if you actually turn and face it, then you can actually remove the Chinese finger trap, right? And she shows it brilliantly in this video. I'll see if I can find that too. There's, there's a lot of referential stuff over a long period of time that comes to the conclusions I've come to out of this. Thank you for sticking with me. What I learned from the story of two wolves is you, me, as a person, I can speak for myself, I had to kind of accept that voice that wanted awful things. And I had to look at it and go, okay, look, I'm gonna stop fighting you. I know you're here. I heard somebody else reference it as, you know, Shiva the Destroyer shows up and you say, welcome to the party. Come on in. You know, we've got lots of people here. You're welcome to be here as long as you don't interrupt the party. What I had to do, I think, is say, look, you get five minutes today. You don't get the whole day. You get five minutes. And maybe 10. Maybe some days it expanded to 15, but you don't get the whole day anymore. You don't get to come in every hour, once an hour. You get to come in for five or 10 minutes, do what you need to do, and then you're going to sit down and be quiet. Some days that worked and some days it took a whole lot longer, but over time it started to go away. The voice still shows up sometimes, but it's not anything like it was. And I knew by 2016 that I was back in control. I wasn't going to act on any of these awful things that I was thinking. I've been working on meditation. I've said that. I recently came across Aaron Doherty videos. And in one of those videos, he talks about Ho'oponopono. Ho'oponopono is apparently a Hawaiian tradition. And in this tradition, you say four things. And it comes from, I think, a psychologist or somebody who worked in a hospital, basically fixed the hospital through this one simple meditation. And you say four things in this meditation. The four things are, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Ho'oponopono. And you don't necessarily say this to the person, you say this to yourself. When you've been wronged, when something's happened to you, when you're trying to get past something, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. I watched that video, it kind of stuck with me, that's interesting. Sometime in another meditation, the music that I was listening to was Source Energy from a singer named Maylon. I'll link to that as well. She sings with herself on a looping track, it's awesome. And I just listened to her sing on this track. About seven minutes in, she comes in and she says, if there's anyone in need of healing, just send that energy, go to that place of healing. And I'm calling in source energy for healing, calling in source energy for the places that need healing. If there's anyone in need of healing, I think is what she says. And like these two things gelled together, Ho'oponopono, and if there's anyone in need of healing, and I'm in, I'm in need of healing. Wow, I'm, I'm actually in need of healing still. In 2023, I'm in need of healing. I've got this pituitary tumor and I've got this psychology. And in that moment, I realized that what I was either asking myself or being asked to from something greater or something inside myself is saying, why don't you practice Ho'oponopono with this person who caused you this harm? And my brain said, that. That was my initial reaction, <laughs> F that. 10 years later, my brain still goes, F that. I wanna hang on to this. This is painful stuff. Why, 10 years later? Right? I sat with that for a week or two, came back to it again. I found it coming up again. I was like, why was I the recipient of someone else's evil? Why was I the recipient of someone else's evil? Why was I the recipient of someone? And then it all kind of gelled together. Dachau, Auschwitz, Cambodia, 
any number of other places that we have been. In Vietnam, they will take you to a place and show you where John McCain was imprisoned as a POW during the American Vietnam War. They call it the American War there for good reason. We call it the Vietnam War here. All these places where people were tortured, I asked the question, how can humans do this to other humans? And it makes me think about evil. I don't know what you believe about the universe, either God or the universe or source or whatever it is for you. For me, there was a message that came to me through this other person. So I, I started trying to practice Ho'oponopono with this person. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Okay. That took a while. A month, probably. And I could get to, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you? Just no. Just no. Not going to happen. I am not going to say I love you to the person who caused me so, caused me a the person caused me a level of pain I didn't know I could experience. Not physical pain, mental, emotional pain. That's it. I'm going to just stop with that. The person caused that level of pain for me. I didn't know I could experience that level of pain. And they were the direct cause. So what if the way this whole thing was designed, all of the things that we experience in life, evil being one of them, and humans' ability to either act in evil ways or choose not to, what if evil is inherent in the system, programmed in, to the coding programmed in by God. God throws Lucifer out of heaven, right? In this story, Lucifer is now the devil and this is the evil within us. In every tradition, there is the story of talking about the evil. But evil is an intentional, let's just go with the matrix. Right? If the matrix is programmed, evil is an intentional glitch in the matrix. Why? Because it's a way for us to practice the best in us. Lots of examples of this. I scuba dive. I love scuba diving. I haven't been a ton. I would like to go much more, but we live in the mountains. <laughs> the nearest ocean is 20 hours away. As a scuba diver, you come to know that part of the knowledge of what makes scuba diving possible is that humans were tortured in order to discover that information by the Nazis in the 1930s, 1940s. How do you reconcile that? This amazing thing that we have to go underwater and out of the evilness of the Nazi regime, out of the evilness of those things that happened, I can go explore fishes under the water and turtles. How, how do you reconcile that in your brain? And it seems to be part of the matrix. Call it a glitch, call it an intentional glitch, but it seems to be there. Put there by God or source or the programmer or whatever you want to say as a way for us to learn our ability, not our ability, our, learn, our, learn our choice, our choice to either act on that or not. You see this in lots of movies, lots of shows. For me, <laughs> I was in yet another meditation. It wasn't like this big black cloud, but I was just trying to analyze and look at what's going on in my body, in my head, in my mind, which by the way, the medicine seems to be working. I have another scan coming up. Hopefully it will show that it's shrunk. Apparently this is uncommon but not that uncommon they know how to treat it with medicine and i'm going to talk about that separately this video is really talk about this in this meditation i was viewing like molecules in my brain and there was this just like slow it wasn't like a big cloud it was just like these little drips and i thought well what if i just think about light coming in and i think i was actually creating some sort of chemical through my thought i don't know what but what if i just think about light coming in something that could just push that out or something that could just feed the healthy part this isn't medical advice this is just my story what if i could think about that in that way and i thought about it and i could just keep expanding this light in my thoughts in my body i could just keep expanding this light that formed this cloud of light or not not cloud it was just like a light that kept growing the, the blackness just went away and then <laughs> i went back to aaron doherty's video about Ho'oponopono. And I was like, I just, I can't. I just cannot get to. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I can, no, 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 no. Still, no. I cannot get to, I love you. No freaking way. Not gonna happen. So I'm reading through the comments on the Aaron Doherty video. And I wish I, I remembered the exact language of the comment. One person said, I love you can also be I forgive you. And I thought, Okay, maybe I could get to I forgive you with this person. Maybe. Maybe. I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. That's all me. I forgive you is about the things you did to me. Maybe, but I can't get to I love you. Kept reading. Somebody else posted something and they said, 
and I'll find it and I'll link maybe to it or just mention the person because it, honestly life changing for me. 10, 10, well, at least a good four years of just working to like, I don't want this anymore. I don't need to carry this anymore, but not knowing how to let it go. So I read this comment and it says, when I'm speaking these words, I'm speaking to the source. I'm not speaking to the person. At least that's the way I read the comment. And I never thought about that. I never thought about, I could say, I'm sorry to the source. I'm sorry to God. Uh, please forgive me for not honoring and valuing myself. 2012 was such a difficult year for me. Lost a business, lots of stuff. I have a journal with pages and pages of I hate you. You f***ing suck. You're the worst. I f***ing hate you. How could you be so stupid? I have a journal, probably a hundred pages over a long period of time saying that kind of crap to myself. I can easily say to God, to source, to the creator, to the programmer, to something greater than myself that created me in some way. I can easily say to that source, I'm sorry. I can easily say to that source, please forgive me. I am that source, that source is me. All of us are individuals. And I believe we're spiritual beings having individual experiences, all part of something much greater. And I can say, I love you to that too. And so I've finally, after a decade and a pituitary tumor, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Gotten to a place where I deeply understand hate, where I deeply understand evil, and where I know I can still choose differently. And I don't know how else I would know that in the way that I know it now. So at the end of this video, I want to do the Ho'oponopono and in this beautiful place, release it release all of this that I've carried for too long. I'm sorry for it not being as strong as I should have been, for not honoring myself as I should have. I know that, like everyone else, I'm an amazing creation. I know that I am an impossible creation. I know that I'm incredibly capable of amazing things. And I didn't honor any of that. You brought me something to help me understand. I'm sorry that I didn't honor myself more. I'm sorry that I didn't honor the creation that you've made me to be. Please forgive me. I could have been more. Please forgive me for all the things I could have done differently. For all the ways I could have showed up. For this person who showed up to provide a message to me. I could have shown up differently for them and didn't. Didn't feel I knew how to, but I did. I did know. Please forgive me for not showing up in the way I could have in those times. Thank you for bringing me this lesson in a way that I don't, I don't know how I would have understood it. Otherwise, I don't. I cannot comprehend a way in which I could have understood hate and evil in the way that I understand it and also in what it takes to overcome it on a personal level. I don't know that I could have understood that. And I love you. And I forgive you for bringing me the lesson in this way. And I love you for bringing me the lesson. A broken heart can mean split in half or it can mean split open. I realize that's a trite phrase, but I do believe that this was to split me open and let me share more. Maybe this video is part of that. Maybe this reaches you in a moment when you're needing this. And if it does, thank you for watching. Where do we go from here? I'm going to be fine. If you're worried about the pituitary tumor, I'm actually at this point more annoyed about it than anything else. I'm going to make some other videos to talk about the challenge that it's been and also the medicine that I've taken and what the positive and negative effects have been from that medicine. So I'm going to make a couple of videos, I think. I never found a video where somebody had this, hey, here was my experience. I found a Reddit board, basically, and read some people's stuff. Some of it was interesting and useful, but I'm going to make the videos that I wish I could have found to understand or at least anticipate some of the things I have experienced and am experiencing, again, both positively and negatively. Thank you for taking the time to watch the video. I don't have a call to action at the end of the video. Look, if, if this goes out into the ether and, and it reaches somebody... I think that's amazing. 
And if it has reached you in some way, please feel free to comment. You know, everybody says like, subscribe, and comment. Honestly, if this has reached you in some way, then good. If you feel like you want to comment and share what that has been for you as an experience, please do. If this is useful and helpful, I anticipate it might be because I know how much this other video, she doesn't even know, and the not knowing is the worst. So yeah, if this has been helpful for you, I won't know unless you say something. So it would be great to know if this has been helpful for you. At the same time, if you don't feel like you want to do that, that's okay too. I'll just continue, I guess, making silly videos, getting my feet tickled and chopping wood, doing some of the other silly stuff we've done in 2023. Couldn't do any of that in May, June, July this year because of the medicine, but it's been kind of a motivator to just enjoy life more. Thank you. You're 30 minutes and 23 seconds into watching me at the moment. So that's crazy. I'll just end on beautiful scenery. Thank you for taking time to watch the video.